Hello and welcome to Drawing One. My name is Bonnie Stipe. I'm the professor for this course. Um, this is just a short little welcome video getting you started on the class. I'm going to go over the syllabus, some of the general content, and the materials for the course. So if you made it this far, I'm assuming that you got it into Canvas okay. Remember the uh, how you get into Canvas. Your user ID is always your W number and your password is the first two letters of your first name, the first two letters of your last name, and the last four of your W number. Okay, so um, like I said, we're just going to quickly kind of go over a few things. This is the general course outline. All of your course content is going to be over here in the modules. You're going to start with, oh, I just realized I didn't publish something correctly. I have to go back and fix it. All your course content is going to be in the modules, but I'm going to have to go back and publish it, and I will fix that before you guys see it. Uh, just to go over the syllabus here. Um, this is fall 2020. Like I said, this the course that you're in is Introduction to Drawing 2A. We are meeting entirely online. This is an asynchronous course, so uh, that means that each week you will have things show up in the modules. Each module will be due. I'm going to leave student view so I can make sure my modules are under view. Um, Sorry, I forgot to do that. If anything looks weird on there, always let me know. Sometimes I just have to hit a little button and go back to student view so you can see it the way that I'm seeing it. And yeah, sorry about that. Um, on here, each week is going to show up for you guys, so only uh, what is due that week will show. Um, so you can see... You have to go through start here this week and also uh, week one to August 23rd, 11.59 p.m. Just remember your work's always going to be due Sunday night by 11.59 p.m. So uh, the whole week will be posted all at once. So you see we have some activities already to do there for week one and also the introduce yourself uh, and also going, you know, one of the things you're meant to do is go over the syllabus and get your materials. Uh, my office hours are online 3 to 5.30 on Monday and Wednesdays. My contact email there, bstipe at chabotcollege.edu. And my phone number, uh, you can text me at that number. It is uh, sort of a line I can turn on and off, so you probably won't get a response if you call me in the middle of the night. Okay, but like I said, definitely you can text message me if you have an easy question. All right, uh, course description. This is an introductory drawing course. And it's also what can be considered an observational drawing co course, meaning we're mainly drawing from observation or from life. This is the first time I've ever done this course online. You will be setting up a lot of still life and things to draw for yourself at home. So be aware of that. It's not on the materials list, but you're going to find objects and things around your house. Also, make sure you have some good lighting. We'll talk about that once we get to the still life that you're setting up yourself at home. Uh, we also will be looking at contour value, perspective, and composition. You're going to produce a variety of wet and dry media. You see we also work with ink along with graphite and charcoal. Uh, we are developing expressive content through the mission of manipulation of line, form, value, and composition. We are going to be doing observational drawing. So uh, we're not doing a ton of things uh, from your imagination, which has its place too. Uh, the idea behind this class is that you're going to learn a lot of tools that you can then take and do whatever you want with. So um, there is some limitations to that, but learning the tools first will actually 
allow you to be more creative. So think about it like that. And the beginning of the class is more sort of like, this is how you say measure. This is how you do a lot of different specific techniques. The second of the class, yeah, it gets a little bit looser where you can get into some of your more ideas more. Um, we will be learning about linear perspective uh, using negative and positive shapes. We will also uh, work uh, in black and white media. That's the main material we're going to use. We don't get into color. If you take drawing two, drawing and composition, you will get into color in that class. This class is just specifically black and white. Uh, we will participate in group critiques. Um, we will learn about uh, different terminology. You will critique not just your own work, but other students' work. And we also will look at a variety of historic and contemporary developments in drawing. One of the main things we're going to do is learn how to create the illusion of three-dimensional form on a flat two-dimensional surface. Some of these techniques date all the way back to the Renaissance, which is kind of cool demonstrate uh, skill and hand-eye coordination, so learning how to connect what's in your mind to your pencil. Uh, and we will think about organizing an interesting composition, so we're trying to make interesting drawings, not just learn how to draw something realistically. All right, so we are going to learn how to sight measure as a foundation for all observational drawings. That's sort of one of the main things that we start off on. Some of this is kind of a repeat um, because, you know, that happens a lot with uh, syllabi. They sort of talk about the same things in slightly different ways. So I'm going to sort of skim through this and you know, make sure you read over it fully. Uh, this sort of goes over some of the specific drawings that we are going to do throughout the semester. If you'll see all those, and you'll see some of those in the course outline as well. You will have a finer portfolio. It'll be a digital portfolio uh, on a website. It's sort of going to be our final project. You'll see that at the end. Um, this course is... Uh, conducted completely on Canvas. Um, if you are having, if you don't have access to a computer, we do have some computers that are available uh, for loan through academic services. They also have hotspots. Uh, you, you know, some content is easier to read on a computer. I know for this class, having the Canvas phone app will be very helpful because you're going to take a lot of pictures of your work. So um, that could be an important resource for you as well. Netiquette, uh, just some reminders about how to behave. You know, netiquette is the idea that, um, like etiquette, there are certain ways to be act, be uh, respectful of other people. We want to make, uh, you know, you're interacting with other people in real life, so you want to be considerate with them. Uh, be sensitive to the fact that there will be different cultural and linguistic backgrounds, such as different political and religious beliefs, you know, just differences in general. So um, sometimes it's very easy to look at things only through our own lens. You want to consider other people's feelings, and uh, when you're having a discussion, that doesn't mean never talk about um, political or religious beliefs. Actually, that can be a big part of art, uh, but you need to be sensitive in the way that you're talking about it and respectful of other people's opinions. Have uh, good taste when composing your responses and Discussion forums, no swearing or profanity. That's your kind of none of that being said, but just a reminder. Um, you should also consider that sometimes slang can be misunderstood or the way that you're phrasing things. So you want to write things in a clear manner. Don't use all capital letters when composing your responses. It's considered shouting on the internet and can be regarded as impolite or aggressive. 
be respectful of the other's views and opinions, avoid flaming or publicly attacking or insulting others because it can hurt feelings and um, decrease the chances of getting different types of views. Be careful when using acronyms. It's best to spell out the meaning first. Like, for example, when you say frequently asked questions and FAQ, then you can continue to use the acronym freely. Uh, use grammar and spelling to avoid uh, using uh, text messaging shortcuts like LOL, JK, you know, those kinds of things. Your grade will be based off your assignments, class participation, involvements and critiques, level of craftsmanship. Uh, each assignment, the longer assignments anyways, have rubrics associated with them. So you'll see some very specific objectives that I'm looking for on those projects. Every single one is going to have a, a craftsmanship element to it, though. And your, um, you know, it's important to turn things in on time. You can, your uh, letter grade can be deducted for late assignments. Online attendance, students in distant education are required to attend class just as if they were in face-to-face. -face. So if you're not participating and turning in work, you can be dropped for non-participation. Sketchbook. You are required to keep a sketchbook for this class. You don't turn it in, you know, you're not going to turn in the physical sketchbook for a grade, but you are going to turn in sketchbook assignments that will be graded. For example, you'll be turning in thumbnails or other ideas for assignments that will typically be kept in a sketchbook. Um, it's nice to have that all in a nice little spiral bound physical sketchbook. Uh, but if you want to use um, loose paper and uh, to keep them together in a folder or something bound, that's totally okay with me too. Please follow all guidelines for toxic or flammable materials. We're not really using too much. I do give some specific uh, guidelines on how to um, use the ink once we get to it. But it's not, we're using um, ink that isn't toxic or anything. Academic dishonesty, you know, this is important, especially in an online class, that you're not misrepresenting someone else's work as your own or taking something from the internet as your own. You can be dropped from the course or fail the course for doing something like that. Uh, mental health and stress management. Chabot College prides itself in creating a learning environment where students are valued and supported in their academic, career, and professional development. I've included a link on here to some of those uh, college-wide services, um, uh, and, you know, especially if you're having something, especially right now in this sort of unprecedented time, if you're having some issues, there are resources on campus, so there's a link to it there, that, especially if you are uh, in need of one of those. Uh, students with special needs, I've included the information for the DSRC. I'm going to, I should include their link to their website too, because I think they're doing everything online as well. Okay. And then I also have sort of a course outline. This could change. We're doing just some basic things here. Week one, you'll see a general over overview. There might be a little wiggling here and there. And uh, materials return. I sent an email out describing this as well, uh, but we do have some easels available if you're working from home and you want to borrow a tabletop easel. There's some hours that you can um, stop in to check one out. We also have some supplies if you are struggling with waiting for your um, student aid money to come in and you need some money to or you need some paper or something like that initially, you can come into those hours and pick some of those materials up from our equity closet as well. Um, we also have a, a $500 need-based uh, scholarship that I included information in the email about as well. Okay, so I'm going to go over each one of these and point them out. I'm going to go to the Blick website just because that's one of the easier ones to look at um, and sort of 
give you some visuals on each of these. There is a, uh, there is, uh, the whole kit itself is available at the bookstore. I think they're doing pickup only right now. Um, so if you order online, you can stop by the store and pick it up. Everything is included in there. If you have some materials and want to buy them individually, that's totally okay as well. Um, you know, Lick is a good store to go to, uh, but you could also go to Michael's, Hobby Lobby. Any of these materials should be ready, readily available there. So first one is a drawing board. You can buy, they've kind of got, uh, just click on one. They've kind of got these, this is, these are what we have at the school. You know, one that clips the paper in that looks like this. You could, if you've got a board big enough to fit 18 by 24 paper at your house, you could use that. Home Depot just sells flat board by itself. You don't need the clips on there for, you know, three, four dollars. Um, one of these boards is usually 15, 12, 15 dollars. Um, you can also use, this is what's in the kit. If you did get the kit, um, it should include, um, let me pull this up. It's got, um, I forget what they call it on there. Oh, you could get a foam core board. I saw it just pop up. I think actually the Elmer's one is the one we have. You know, it's just a fat piece of uh, white foam core. And this is a bunch all together. But that's what's in your kit. You could use that as well. You need some kind of rigid surface to draw on, especially working from home that you can put on the... Uh, if you pick up one of those tabletop easels or you can lean on another surface and work from, this is, this is very important. Otherwise, you'll have very wrinkled work. A large pad of newsprint. Go to newsprint. Newsprint we use a lot of sheets of, especially at the beginning. All your first drawings are going to be done on the newsprint, so this is important to get sooner than later. It's one of the cheaper brands of paper. That's why we're kind of using it for our warm-up drawings. You want to get the 18 by 24 pad. Um, see, it's $8, this particular brand, Blix, one of the cheaper ones. Um, uh, Michaels has some other different kind of off-brands, too. It, it, it might be a little more expensive than $8 at like Michael's or Hobby Lobby, but uh, expect to play around like $10 for it. A Strathmore pad of drawing paper. This is what you'll do your nicer, longer drawings on. More 400 series is a good one, but um, I'm just going to Strathmore. paper and oh, I have a good drawing paper pen. Four hundred series. It's a little thicker. It's eighteen by twenty four. This one's eighteen dollars. There's different brands that you could get a little bit cheaper than that. But, you know, expect to pay around 15 to $20, I'd say, for the Strathmore paper. And that's what all your sort of nicer, complete drawings will be on. 24 sheets is plenty. Some of them have 15. That should be enough, too. Next thing is charcoal pencils. There's three of them in there if you get the kit. show you what it looks like. Generals is kind of the main charcoal pencil. And this actually has the next um, thing in it too. If you get this set, this is what's in the kit. 
it's got a bunch of charcoal pencils and then it has a kneaded eraser if I can zoom in on that um, I'll just type it in so you can see it better it's got a kneaded eraser these are sort of for softer erasing they work really good with charcoal Maybe I got the needed eraser, compressed charcoal. There's a few different kinds of charcoal on here. Yes, you need all of them. They serve different purposes, especially when we get into full value. Initially, you really only need the um, charcoal pencil and the newsprint. The rest of these you can wait till we get to value to buy if you're strapped for cash. You can see. There's a couple of different ones. You need at least three sticks. Generals is found everywhere. They have they have a pack of four instead of a pack of three, but I put three minimum. Some other ones have three. It should be around, you know, three, four dollars for the compressed charcoal sticks. And the difference between the compressed and billow is the compressed sort of a darker, richer tone. The vine is used more for blending, that's why you need both of them. And we use it for underdrawings too. Um, you can get vine or willow, they're very similar. The vine tends to be skinnier, the willow tends to be fatter. Some of them have a mixture, that's actually nice because they, you know, they serve different purposes. Sorry, I'm talking, I can't type in, or talk and type at the same time. Uh, for example, the Windsor Newton has vine and willow in it together. You, you can kind of see they they sometimes sell a multi pack, but they are the same thing. It's basically a vine or willow that's been um, he heated in a kiln until it turns to carbon, whereas the compressed is actually um, you know compressed together, so it makes it darker. And the white vinyl eraser. This is a, you know, we have the kneaded. This is a slightly different eraser. It's a hard eraser that can kind of pick up white. You'll need that when we get to value, and it's really good at, at cleaning up pencil. Blending stumps. You need at least two because you, you're going to want one for charcoal and you're going to want one for graphite. Just keep them separate. You can clean them. Uh, you need a piece of sandpaper to do that. But you can also just kind of keep them separate. There's one type. There's all kinds of different ones. If I can find... Uh, great paper stuff. We'll just go. They just look like this. You should be able to find them for a couple couple bucks. Um, they're used for blending. Drawing pencils. You can get a set. Uh, the minimum you want a hard, you want a soft, and you want one in the middle. That's why I kind of have those three different. Oops. I must have clicked on something incorrectly there. But drawing. They're labeled by their different hardnesses. I'll just click on the black one. Um. 6B is the softest, and as it goes down in number, it gets harder. So the HB's in the middle. Oops. Or H is the hardest that they carry. So three's enough. Most of the time, the, when you get a pencil set, there's like a ton in there, um, which is fine, too. I think the kit has like eight in them or something like that. The thin black micron pen or Sharpie. You can get the fine Sharpie. 
Micron is more expensive, but it's archival. Having a, sh a Sharpie's in the kit just to make the kit a little bit cheaper. Just if you want a felt tip. Uh, and not a big fat one like this. Oh, you want the little fine one. I'll do, I'll show you the micron pen. Like this. So you want one that's kind of smaller. Oh, five, it would be good for that. And then chamois cloth or soft cloth. You can just, you don't have to buy a cloth. You could use an old cotton t-shirt. Um, these work a little better than that, but they're also kind of expensive. So that's why I would say, you know, if you don't have the money, definitely just use a cotton t-shirt. It works pretty well. Old cotton rag, sometimes it works pretty well too. Otherwise, you've got to pay. They keep going up with the price, $6 now for it. But it does, it's a great erasure tool, blending tool. Um, it is great to have too, but you know, you can, if you're, if you want, you can also use soft, uh, soft cotton rag. 18 inch ruler, Eight, 18 is kind of the minimum since you're going to need it for your paper when we do some gridding. Blue tape for delicate surfaces, especially for paper. Um, you can get that anywhere though. Show you what it looks like just like that big load three three and scotch and then a uh, sumi ink brush oh I'm not in the right spot here sumi sumi ink brush let me pull this out I can't spell right. Some fifth up anyway. So they look like this. You only need one. It has a variety of thicknesses in it. We're going to use that when we get to the ink. And then a sumi ink itself. We'll use it for value and for our negative space drawings. I think we, this is the one that's in the kit. Something like this. There's another variety. Um, if you're near a die, so they, they have this very cheap, the Sumi ink and the brushes themselves, like for a dollar or two. Way cheaper than black. Um, and then uh, Economy uh, Pencil Sharpener. It's nice to have a little portable one when you're drawing so you don't have to keep walking over to where your pencil sharpener is. Uh, let me know. There's a link here if you have some questions. Let me go back. Oh. If you go to the module, there's a link here for questions about class materials. That way, if you have a question, probably somebody else has a question, so just kind of put it there as a little forum. There are some baseline drawings that you have to do. You don't need the materials for those. So you, you basically have uh, until the following week where you're going to need need to have your materials. So you have some time to get them together. And um, you can contact me if you have any questions. All right.